Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making hamburger rolls, homemade hamburger rolls. What could be better than that? Now you can go out to the store and you can buy hamburger rolls up the wazoo, but you know what? There's nothing that's going to taste yeasty and yummy and fresh out of the oven with your burgers or sandwiches, anything you want. You can even have them as a, as a roll for breakfast. They are spectacular and they're super easy to make. And you can just sort of crank them out as you want them. So yes, it is a yeast bread and we are gonna be using the instant active yeast. This is the Arnold Schwarzenegger yeast. Each yeast cell actually can produce more carbon dioxide than active dry yeast. And in the store, it's known as instant active dry yeast or fast rising. So let's get started. So in my electric mixer, my electric mixing bowl, I have three cups of all-purpose flour. And if you want to use four cups of all-purpose flour, you can. But I'm going to add one cup of white whole wheat flour. Just to give it a little extra nutrition, it gives it a little bit of a, a whole grain uh, uh, to it, and I, I sort of like that very, very much. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to put my, um, my paddle in in a little while, and I'm going to mix all my dry ingredients. I have one and a quarter teaspoons of kosher salt and two and a half uh, tablespoons of granulated sugar. I'm going to put that right in there. And this is an enriched dough. So it basically has an egg, it has some milk, um, it's not like something like a pizza dough or a, a boule that you might make with sourdough that has no enriching ingredients and tenderizing ingredients. So it's going to be nice and tender. Now I'm pushing it a little bit. I'm going to add a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger, okay? Because I want our rolls not to have to rise forever and ever. And sometimes rich yeast doughs take a little bit longer to rise. So I'm going to add two and three quarter teaspoons of that instant active or Arnold Schwarzenegger yeast. And I'm going to put my paddle on and I'm just going to get that moving. All right, just so everything is evenly distributed. Now what I like about this yeast is you don't have to proof it. You don't have to, you know, put it in something warm with warm water and a little sugar and wait and wait and see if it's alive and it starts the fermentation process. So you can add it right to your dry ingredients, this instant active yeast. So I have one large egg, I'm going to add that, the whole egg, and then I'm going to add four tablespoons of softened, un, unsalted butter, softened. All right, let me grab a spoon, and I'm going to grab my heated milk. I have one and a third cups of milk that I've warmed to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. If you dip your finger in and you can take a bath in it, it's good to go if you don't have a thermometer. That's what I always do. And I always tell my students that. You're going to add this slowly. And I always tell people making yeast spreads, have a little water handy. You may need a little extra moistness depending on whether you packed your flour a little bit. It happens. So it's going to get a little bit more difficult to mix in got all that milk in there. All right. Now I'm going to stop this. You can change to the paddle if you want and actually undergo the kneading process. I'm going to take it to my board. I like to take it to my marble slab and actually knead it by hand. So I'm going to put all my ingredients in here and it feels oh so nice and warm from that milk and yes there is some dry ingredients don't worry we're going to combine those all all right and if we need to add a little extra water we will and this is where you're going to take your bench scraper or your dough cutter and you're going to start gathering because you're not going to be able to knead this it looks sort of like a shaggy mess all right, so this is where you would have taken, if you don't like to knead or you can't knead, you can just sort of flip it over on itself. And it will be a nice soft dough once you get moving. 
You might need a little extra water depending on, I don't know how uh, moist and humid your kitchen is. It does vary. Okay. So I think I'm good right now. So I'm just going to keep flipping because I can't knead right now, but I'm going to flip. And in the wings, I have a large bowl that I've sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. because so I'm going to let this mixture rise for about an hour and a half. I'm going to grab a little bit more water, just a tad. And this is warm. I'm just going to add a little bit, just like moisten it like this because you don't want it too wet. And it also depends. White whole wheat flour and any whole wheat flour is actually going to absorb a little bit more water than an all-purpose flour. So we're just going to get this all together. It should be soft and supple. If you do use that whole wheat, you're going to have a little bit of a graininess to the feel of the dough, but that's fine. That's just the whole wheat flour. These are going to make about a dozen rolls, unless, of course, you're making sliders. Slider buns are always fun to make. So you can make them tiny, and then you can make tiny burgers. I love tiny burgers. I love anything tiny, except I like my hamburgers big, and I like my buns big, too. My hamburger bun's big. All right, so now I'm beginning to knead. I'm going to roll over all of this excess flour that I have, and you can see I'm not adding any excess flour to, so when they say, you know, knead your dough on a floured surface, try to avoid adding excess flour. I find most of the time I don't knead it, get it? So I usually don't knead it, N-E-E-D, because if I add it, I end up with a very dry bread. All right, so I'm just going to start kneading this. And I actually have a proof, a proof section in my oven. You know, it, it can actually create about 100 degrees. You don't want to go any higher than that for proofing. Or if it's warm where you live, you can actually put the covered bowl. You want to cover it with plastic wrap of your dough and put it outside uh, where it's nice and warm for about an hour. Not in direct sunlight, though. Sometimes in the summer, I'll do that. I'll put it right on my porch. But I have this proofer setting on my oven, and it's sort of great. See, this doesn't look so shaggy now, right? Looks pretty good. You're looking good. You're looking good. All right, so here's my bowl. And it, the bowl should be nice sized because uh, this is going to grow. And I'm going to put it in my greased bowl. I'm going to roll it around there and flip it over so the grease side is up. I'm gonna take plastic wrap, I'm gonna put it on top. I'm going to put it in a nice warm spot, in my case, my oven, for about an hour, an hour and a half till it's about doubled in size, all right? So my dough just came out of my proofing oven because I have that special feature, of just a warm spot in your house after about an hour and a half. So I've uncovered it and it feels nice and warm and toasty from the fermentation process because there's a lot of heat generated by that yeast. And I'm just going to gently dump it out. Dump is such a harsh word. And I'm not going to mess with the dough too much because I don't want to tighten the gluten. Otherwise, I won't be able to shape it. I'm going to take my bench scraper, and I'm actually going to get it into a rough square just so I can cut it in half. And you're just going to eyeball it. If I really want to be specific, I'd weigh this whole um, thing of dough on my digital scale, and then I would, uh, you know, take three ounces for each one or whatever. So it's in half now, all right, and I'm just going to gently get it so that I'm going to, remember, we're going to make about a dozen. Unless you want to make sliders, you can make more. And I'm just going to try to make six from each half. All right, so you're going to make like a log. You're going to divide it in half. And again, this is just by your eye. And then you're going to do thirds. All right, on each side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
and I'm going to do the same over here. And this is important just to try to be as uniform as possible. You don't want somebody saying, hey, my burger bun is smaller than yours, because that would get me upset. I'll tell you that right now. All right, so I got 12, 12 babies ready to be rolled. And there's two ways to roll a bun or a small, a small roll. You want to make a C with your fingers. All right, I'm left-handed, so I'm using that. I can take a little bit of oil. I can also take a spray bottle with water. Uh, and it depends. Remember, I'm, I don't have any flour here. I have it nearby just in case, uh, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to see how much uh, tension and friction I have here. If I don't have enough, um, uh, it's good because you want to create that skin of gluten inside. You'll see when we roll. If we have too little friction or too much friction and we want a little bit of, um, we want to lube it a little bit, we can either use um, a smidgen of oil or a little water. <clears throat> so first you're going to take your knuckles, just sort of go around. Pull up on all sides like you're making a drawstring purse. Flip it over. And with that C, sort of get that tension. See how I'm sort of in slow motion. I'm sort of smearing and creating a very thin skin of gluten to hold in on that roll. See that? So now I have that perfect little, beautiful little roll hamburger bun and it's going to rise don't worry we're going to take our other ones let's do a little a little bit of oil on here so again drawstring purse pretend you're making a drawstring purse bring it up and then just sort of bring it around it's sort of like c c c that's what you're doing and it takes a little practice so you got 12 rolls to practice with which is fabulous and if you don't like doing it with oil, this is just a neutral oil, like canola oil, uh, you can do it with a little bit of water. All right, and then I just sort of go like that, get my round shape, pinch anything on the bottom that may be uneven, and then put it a few inches away from the other one. All right, I'm gonna continue doing these. What I've done is I've sprayed some plastic wrap with nonstick cooking spray. Once I get my 12 rolls on here, and if you find one sheet pan is enough, get another one, line it with parchment, and then cover it with that oiled plastic wrap. Just put it gently on top. Don't pull it over the edge. Just do it very gently and let it rise in a nice warm spot again for about an hour. So my gorgeous hamburger rolls have risen uh, for about an hour and a half, and this is the proofing process where they rise in the shape that they're going to go into the oven. So exciting. Now we get to preheat our oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I've done that. I'm going to peel off my sprayed, my greased parchment uh, plastic wrap, and they're beautiful, and they've really risen. If they've ri risen and sort of formed a friend next to them, don't worry about it. We'll just gently uh, cut them apart. Now we're going to take a spritz bottle. If you don't have a spritz bottle, you can just sprinkle a little water, um, or you can even skip that part. I just want sesame seeds on top. I have black and white sesame seeds, and I just want them to stick. And this will also help form a nice golden brown crust. So I'm just going to give them a little spritz, spritz, spritz. Just very little bit, not a lot. If you want, you can also take um, a, a pastry brush and just lightly oil them with a neutral oil. And I'm just going to put this over them. So I have some black and white sesame seeds. If you don't want sesame seeds, leave them off. You can use anything you want. You could use uh, kosher salt, sea salt, uh, uh, you know, coarsely ground black pepper. That would be beautiful. Whatever you like on your rolls. All right, I'm just going to give them a little sprinkling. And they're going to be in the oven for between 18 and 20 minutes, and you want them to get nice and golden brown. So my homemade hamburger buns just came out of the oven, and they're gorgeous. And they're covered with these beautiful sesame seeds. They look delicious. They took about 18 minutes, even a few seconds under. It depends on your oven. So do monitor. Give them probably at least 18 
um, and then take a look. You can rotate midway through if you want, but they should be nice and brown on the top and beautiful, and they will soften after a few minutes when they come out of the oven. So they're not going to be super hard, and they're just lovely. Look how squishy. I hope you enjoy these. I hope you make your own hamburger buns because you can do it. I have faith in you. I hope you eat lots of burgers or lots of sandwiches. I hope you become a subscriber. Till next time.